Welcome to our review on evidence and examples of evolution. The first person we're going to look at here is Charles Darwin. Now, what Darwin actually did was he actually went on the HMS Beagle and sailed around the world on it. And while he was sailing around on the HMS Beagle, every time they came to some new area, then he'd make notes on all the plants and animals that he saw. And this included some very detailed sketches and all of the observations that he made. When he returned, he actually published a book called On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection in 1859, which summarised his ideas about natural selection and what's actually led to every organism evolving over time. Now, it wasn't received well, and the reason behind this whole negativity towards his ideas and his book was down to the very strong religious beliefs of the population at that time. Because what Darwin was saying was obviously completely opposite to what the Bible said. And as a result of that, what we actually see is there was a lot of mocking of Charles Darwin at the time. The picture in the bottom right there is one that they actually published in the newspapers, mocking him by putting his head on the body of an ape, because obviously he was sort of saying that in natural selection, we share this common ancestor with monkeys. But people obviously interpreted that and say, well, we're not like monkeys, so you're saying that we're just like them, we're going to put your head on a monkey's body. But what we've actually found is that over time, this theory has actually been discussed and tested by scientists, and that's why natural selection is now widely accepted, because it has been tested and they can't fault it. The second person who is very important is Alfred Russell Wallace. Now, he was a Welsh biologist working at the same time as Charles Darwin, but he never really got the same recognition. He also collected a lot of evidence and came up with the same idea as Darwin to explain it. Another source of evidence for evolution comes from these things called living fossils. Now, these are organisms that have not changed over millions of years, and this could be down to the fact their environment hasn't changed. So I've given you three examples at the bottom there. You've got the coelacanth on the left-hand side, shark in the middle, and crocodiles on the right. So these are organisms that just haven't changed over millions of years, and that's down to the fact that their environment hasn't really changed. So they've got no need to evolve. If we consider examples where we can see evolution having take place, the first one is the peppered moth. So what we actually find is that the pale moth, which we can see in the bottom right corner there, was actually very well camouflaged against light bark of trees. However, when it came to the 1800s and the Industrial Revolution kicked in, then the trees in those industrial areas became very soot covered and the actual bark became much darker. So as a result of that, we can see on that picture at the bottom right that the pale moth stands out, whereas the darker moth blends in perfectly. It's well camouflaged. So the light moths became eaten by the birds much more, and that meant that the dark moths were the ones that then survived. They reproduced, and therefore the dark variety became more common. Our second example of where we can see evolution is in antibiotic resistance in bacteria. Now hopefully you remember that antibiotics are drugs that are used to kill bacteria off, but some bacteria have a mutation that makes it resistant to the antibiotic. So that means that the bacteria won't be killed by it. Any of the offspring that come from that resistant bacteria will inherit that gene, so they will also be resistant. So we obviously have a clear example of antibiotic resistance in the fact that we are seeing more and more bacteria becoming resistant to our antibiotics as time goes on. The third and final one is warfarin resistance. Now, warfarin is a rat poison that we've used for a good few years now. Some rats, however, have got this mutation that makes them resistant to it so it doesn't kill them. If we now look at the population of rats in the United Kingdom, what we see is that there is an ever-increasing number of those rats that are resistant to warfarin. So the poison we've used for many years just isn't effective anymore.